Hey fam, so we're in beautiful Sedona this week for a business intensive with our mentors, but I didn't want to miss the chance to share with you today's episode. It's a highly requested one all about ConvertKit, specifically how to get awesome, beautiful opt-in forms to actually perform within ConvertKit. So I'm really excited to show that to you now. Let's jump into the tutorial. In this video, we're going to learn how to set up forms. And the reason why I'm having you create forms, later segments and tags before you import your subscribers, if you have a list or before you collect subscribers, if you do not have an email list is because I want you to get familiar with segmentation and the basic foundation of ConvertKit. Now, the reason why you're creating a form is because that is the place where people will give you an email and a first name or phone number in exchange for something cool. This is how they sign up. It's the entry point into your email list. So you have three different formats of forms that you can create. Number one is inline, and this is the one that you would want to potentially include if you are embedding it into a page or perhaps you are creating a very simple opt-in form that you want to import or embed into a blog post. Inline forms allow you to create a seamless look and integrate into your website design. Now there's also Modo, and these are forms that pop up once a visitor has some kind of behavior on your page. That can be landing on the page, exiting the page, or being on the page for a certain amount of time. And the last one is a slide in opt in form. And that one just prompts your visitor in a subtle way to subscribe to your email list or get a lead magnet from you. Now we're going to stick with the basics and assume that we're going to create an inline form. Now there is some really simple designs that you can choose from. The first one is like a naked form and it only has right name, email, very basic. The other one is a little bit more design um, involved. And so you can choose the one that makes sense for you. For this one, I'm going to select this simple design, the fourth one. And again, you can play with this and kind of um, change the design as you go. Now you're going to want to rename it and I'm going to call this and you should have a system of naming your forms. But for me, if this is just going to be a lead magnet form, I'm going to say lead magnet or title it lead magnet. And I can't type, excuse me. Um, and then I'm going to say, this is maybe a shopping list. Awesome. So now that I have the name down, it's time to kind of play with the aesthetics of the whole thing. So if you click on settings here, you're going to see this menu on your right hand side, and that's going to really customize a lot of the basic settings. So we're going to start first with whether or not you want to show a visitor a success message or you want to redirect them to a thank you page. So if you already have a thank you page on your website set up, you can just import it here. If you just want to show a success, a success method message and say like, yay, you're on the list, you know, look out for an email from me with your lead magnet. You can just add it here. So I'm going to customize a success message and say, you're in, look out for an email with your shopping list in 15 minutes. I would say in five to 15 minutes. Awesome. So that is a great success message. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And next we're going to figure out if we're going to send an incentive email. You can select this if you want to deliver your lead magnet straight away, or you can unselect it if it's not you know, linked to a specific sequence or it's not linked to a specific lead magnet. But if you are delivering a lead magnet, in this example we are, I would recommend selecting send incentive email and then auto confirming new subscribers. Now you really want to check the can spam act rules, right? Especially if you're in the US, you can't just send emails to people that haven't opted into your list. So make sure you know that and you're abiding by those rules as well as GDPR rules, whether you are in the US or not. So I'm gonna link a variety of awesome resources for you to review so that you are staying compliant with your email marketing and you are abiding by best practices. All right, so auto confirm new subscribers and there is a separate GDPR 
rule or um, kind of setting that ConvertKit enables what that would basically essentially not auto confirm people who are, you know, who live in the European Union. So that's something to keep in mind. After confirming, you can have, you know, the page redirect if you'd like to. So you can do that. Or, right, if you look at this sample page, this is what ConvertKit will show new subscribers. Basically, hey, subscription confirmed, you're officially on the list, right? Very simple. But if you wanted to have your own, you can. Alternatively, you can say, no, I don't want you to send this message. I actually want you to deliver my lead magnet. So this is how you would do that. So click on the download section and then you choose a file. And this can be, right, any lead magnet. Usually it tends to be a PDF or maybe a spreadsheet. So in our case, we're just using a sample PDF and that is all. Now we click save and you have a very seamless and simple system to deliver your lead magnet. But now is a fun part and we're gonna customize how this form looks. Now keep in mind, if you're using a third party um, you know, pop-up box tool or a uh, lead collecting integration tool like Thrive Leads or maybe Optin Monster or something else, you don't need to customize how the form looks because you're going to customize that on the third-party tool. Now, we're assuming that you're not going to use a third-party tool for this specific tutorial and we're going to customize how it looks. Again, keep in mind, this is something that is probably easier to do via third party tool, but it's totally up to you whether you want to use it or not. So now we have, you know, a couple of elements that we can edit. And what you want to do is kind of play around with background colors, images to fit your personal branding and your personal style. So I'm going to go with something a little bit darker. Um, and of course you can kind of, you know, play around with this and figure out what makes sense for you. I'm going to remove this image just so that my branding is a little bit more um, in line with what I want to create here. And I'm kind of just selecting some of the images that I already have saved here from this week. And let's pick this one. All right. So there it is. And I don't really like what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and make a few changes. And this is what you want to do, right? Just kind of go through and make changes to kind of fit your own individual branding. Now I'm going to switch the text color to be a little bit darker or sorry, the background color at the bottom to be a little bit darker and play with that as well. Mm, don't love it. Let's go back to what it used to be. Let's leave it white. Okay. So <laughs> there we have that. And then of course you can kind of play with the background opacity. Um, I'm going to kind of edit it a little bit here. 5% seems to be a little bit darker. There we go. So 40%. And then you can add any custom CSS. If you do know CSS, that's awesome. You can edit that there. And then I'm just going to customize the actual font text and maybe let's try a dark color. See what that looks like. All right. So I could say download your free shopping list here and you can add a little bit more contest or context right um, get easy easy to follow shopping list that's fully printable all right awesome so don't follow this right I'm just kind of coming up with examples as I go you want to be way more specific and follow all the principles that we talk about in the perfect lead magnet course so just keep that in mind I'm just using um, basic examples so we can kind of go through this quickly okay so you have here finally um, some of your fields and you can kind of go through and edit the field styles if you would want to add a name as well highly highly recommend doing that right so first name here we would add a first name make it required or not that's up to you and font color border all that good stuff so I, you definitely want to make the email field required right so that people are giving you their email and then finally is the subscriber button so you can customize this to your individual branding you know, make it look however you'd like, and then kind of, 
go through that process and see how you can make it bigger or maybe make it smaller and kind of play with whether you want you know a normal font or a bold one and of course you can customize a call to action you can say subscribe to get it for free all right so that's the gist of forms very simple very straightforward the last section that we have here is the advanced settings and here's really cool tools i love these because you get to decide what happens when someone is already subscribed to your list so convertkit already knows who's on your site so they can hide the form show custom content and say like oh it looks like you've already signed up for this email this uh you know shopping list why not try this paid product or something like that right so you can continue to show the form or hide it you can also pass on right subscriber information on your thank you page if you have some kind of url parameter set up this is way more advanced you don't need to do this right now and this will also be a good idea to have is having an invisible recaptcha that basically means that um you know you're kind of showing people hey we use recaptcha we're not like spam or anything but you can decide whether you want that or not and i still can't spell but there it is <laughs> and that is the basic form now in terms of embedding it you can click on embed and you can embed it as a java as html you can share it so if you want to just send people directly to that form you can you'll see it pop up here all right so that's the form you also can integrate it into wordpress so if you have the convertkit wordpress plugin which i highly recommend all you have to do is uh, add the short code wherever you would want that embedded on your wordpress page and you can also directly integrate with unbounce so it's totally up to you i tend to use javascript or the wordpress plugin because i use wordpress so based on what you have that's what you want to create so now i'm going to show you how to actually embed this into your wordpress code uh, website all right so let's say that you want to embed this into your blog post so here i am one of our latest blog posts i'm going to click edit and this is the same process if you're wanting to add this to let's say your page um or if you're trying to do it via divi so here we are on the default editor in WordPress and this has changed recently so it's a little bit different now than it used to be but it's still the same basic principle so I have my WordPress you know blog post set up here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a section wherever I want to embed this form and I'm actually going to select custom HTML now if you wanted to you could have something like a text uh, a paragraph setting if you wanted to use the java instead of the html it's totally up to you so i'm going to use the html heel here and i'm going to add the javascript to it and preview it and boom there it is so you don't have to use the raw html right that we have here you can also use the java and that will embed your form wherever. You can also preview the blog post and see what it would look like once you know people are actually reading through it. So if you wanna do that, kind of scroll down and see where it might be. And sometimes it shows it, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so it's not showing it on this one specifically in terms of the preview, but um, let's see what happens when we click save. So I'm gonna update it and we're going to go ahead and click on this post to see where it's embedded awesome so here we are on the live post and boom there is the actual form so really cool really simple very 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 effective all right guys so there you have it that's how to create a convert kit form really easily very quickly and if you want to dive in deeper that's just a very short 
lesson that's inside of our ConvertKit crash course. So if you really want to learn how to leverage ConvertKit to grow your email list and really set up amazing automations that work while you sleep, write amazing email sequences, you're going to be able to access that tactical know-how, that step-by-step -step technical training inside of our ConvertKit crash course. So all the details are in the description box below. You can access that right away. And if you haven't had the chance of subscribing yet, please do. I know a lot of you guys who watch our videos are not yet subscribed to the channel. Make sure to click on the notif notification bell as well so you never miss out on another video. And I will catch you on the next one. Bye for now.